Okay, here we go. Here's a table of values. What's the best estimate for the first derivative at 18? Well, to figure out what the best estimate for the first derivative at 18, we have to understand derivatives. And a derivative, what have we said it's basically like? Slope. So how do we find slope? Well, slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? So what's my y values? Well, I'm going to want to do the ones that surround 18, okay? I'm not going to take the first and the last or any others. I'm just going to take the ones that surround 18. So I go... 96 minus 87 over 19 minus 16. What's 96 minus 87? What? What's 96 minus 87? 9? I thought you said 10. Because <laughs> I thought you said 10. It's like... Why'd you say 10? Okay, what's 95 by 3? Three? Three. Three. There we go. And so that's how you find the estimates of derivatives. Okay. Then looking at derivatives graphically, where are there not a derivative here? Well, if it's not continuous, then there's no derivative. So where is it not continuous? And negative 8, negative 2, and 1. Those all will not have derivatives at their those places because it is not continuous. If a graph comes to a point... There is no derivative. And if it is vertical, there is no derivative. So where would there be no derivatives here? Where does it come to a point? Well, it actually comes to a point right there. Even though maybe it doesn't look like it to you, it comes to a point there. Where it, the slope coming in and the slope coming in this way are not the same. Okay? Like at this point right here, the slope and the slope are changing, but they're changing so little amount that they're basically the same. But at this point, the slope coming in this way and the slope coming in this way are totally different slopes. So then the limits are different. And so there's no derivative because it comes to a point. So at negative 1, there's no derivative. Where is the graph vertical? At 1. So at those two places, it's no, there's no derivative. So here, where would there be no derivative? Negative 3, because it's not continuous, and negative 1, because it's vertical. Okay? So those, those will be super easy when you get to those. Okay. Now, the only hard thing today is these. Okay? Um, is a function continuous and differentiable at negative 4? Now... There is one of these answers, there's always going to be four answers, and there's one you can eliminate right off the bat every single time. What can you eliminate? Oh, continuous. Oh, not continuous. Yeah. Differentiable and not continuous, because there is no such thing as differentiable and not continuous. Okay? So, you're left with three choices. So then, what we have to do first is figure out the continuity. Um, is the test even out there? 
I don't know either. Okay, you want to check and see if the test is out there? Probably. No test? It's just a practice test? Okay, I will put it out there. My username is right there. Oh my goodness. What is going on? Okay, Chloe, it's out there. Okay, so the first thing we check out is if these are continuous. So we plug in the negative 4 into here. What's negative 4 squared? 16. Half of 16 is 8. So that would be the y value there. What's negative 4 squared? 16. What's 5 times negative 4? Negative 20. 16 plus negative 20 is? Is that continuous? No. So it's neither continuous nor differentiable. Check out continuity first. If it's continuous, then we go from there. If we plug in a zero, what do we get? Zero. If we plug in a zero, what do we get? Zero. So they're both going to be at the same point, so it will be continuous. Okay? So it is continuous. So is it continuous and differentiable or continuous and not differentiable? This is what we where we have to do the, well, we have to take f of x minus f of 0 over x minus 0 for each of these, okay? So f of x minus f of 0. f of x is 2x squared minus x squared minus x, I mean, and f of 0 is 0 over x minus 0. So this is the top function. So it's 2x squared minus x over x, which is 2x minus 1. Because if we factor out an x and cancel, we get 2x minus 1. Now if we stick in the 0 to here, we get negative 1. Because we're really finding the limit as x approaches 0 here. Okay? Now, if we do the bottom equation, f of x minus f of 0 over x minus 0 as x approaches 0. So f of x is negative x, f of 0 is 0 over x minus 0. And so we get negative x over x, which is negative 1. If those match, the derivative is negative 1 there, so it is continuous and differentiable. Close out and get back in. All right, let's see what's first on this one. To check if it's continuous. You stick the 2 in. You stick the 2 in. You get negative 4 plus 6, which is 2. You get 4 times 3, which is 12, minus 10, which is 2. Is it continuous? Yes. 
Okay, so we find the derivative. So at the limit as x approaches 2 for this of f of x minus f of 2 over x minus 2. Okay. Um, whoa. So f of x is negative x squared plus 3x minus f of 2 is 2 over 2 minus 2. Um, what? I'm thinking. There's an easier way of doing this, but... Because you haven't learned it yet. That's what we learn tomorrow, to Friday. Okay? So, um... Since we get zero in the denominator, is it differentiable? No. no. So this one would be continuous and not differentiable. So if you have uh, issues, I'll kind of come around and help you a little bit. Um, once you learn how to take derivatives using the shortcut,